Let's start by going through the two different types of enzyme inhibitors, making sure we're really happy with how these work. And then we're going to look at the enzyme inhibitors and how we can differentiate between them in an experimental situation. So this diagram here, this is what we call a competitive inhibitor. And if we look at the diagram, what we can see here is the inhibitor and here is the substrate. Now, the substrate obviously is complementary to the enzyme's active site. And we know that it binds to that active site, forming what we call an enzyme substrate complex. And that's when the reaction takes place. If we look at the inhibitor, it has a similar shape to the substrate. Now, we're not going to say it has the same shape because that would be incorrect. So don't make that mistake. But it must have a similar shape because it is also complementary to the active site. And we can see on the diagram, if you look here, that it's complementary to the active site and the inhibitor can bind to the active site. And we could refer to that as an enzyme inhibitor complex when the inhibitor binds to the active site, not the substrate. So the competitive inhibitor has a similar shape to the substrate. It is complementary to the active site, so binds to the active site. And this will physically block, blocks the substrate from binding. because the inhibitor is in the active site. Instead, it's blocking the substrate from binding. So it's going to reduce the number of enzyme substrate complexes. Because if the inhibitor is bound to the enzyme's active site, the substrate can't bind to the enzyme's active site. It's going to reduce the number of enzyme substrate complexes that form. And that's how it reduces the rate of the enzyme controlled reaction. Now, the non-competitive inhibitors work in a different way. So let's have a look at this diagram. We can see the substrate here. And again, the substrate is complementary to the enzyme's active site. It binds to the active site. It forms the enzyme substrate complex. That's when we get the reaction. Now, if we look at the non-competitive inhibitor, it's not a similar shape at all to the substrate. It's actually binding to an alternative site. So this inhibitor, we can say it binds to an alternative site on the enzyme. Now you can refer to that site as an allosteric site. It's not the active site. The inhibitor was not a similar shape to the substrate. It's not complementary to the active site, but it's binding to an alternative or an allosteric site. Now, when it binds, this alters the tertiary structure of the enzyme. Because the binding of that inhibitor is going to alter the bonds that hold the tertiary structure together. So it will lead to a change in the specific 3D shape of the enzyme or an overall change in what we call the tertiary structure. So then we need to say it changes the shape of the active site. And I'm sure you can see where we're going with this. If we change the shape of the active site, which look, you can see here, the active site was this shape, but now it's this shape. We've changed the shape of the active site. So, the substrate can no longer bind because the active site is no longer complementary. The shape of the active site has been changed. It's no longer complementary to the substrate. The substrate can no longer bind. So again, it reduces the number of enzyme substrate complexes. And I know I go on all the time about using your keywords, but you can see I'm using the word enzyme substrate complex. I'm using the word complementary. I'm using the word active site. I'm also talking about a change in the tertiary structure 
when I talk about my non-competitive inhibitor. So make sure you've got those words in your answers because it's going to lose you marks if you don't. OK, so two different types of inhibitor. They work in two different ways, but the overall result is they will reduce the number of enzyme substrate complexes that form and therefore they will both reduce the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. OK, so how can we distinguish between these two different types of inhibitor? They can be distinguished by experimentally carrying out a substrate versus rate experiment in the presence and the absence of the inhibitor. So let's have a look at the graph. We've got three lines on this graph. The dark blue line is how the rate of reaction would be affected by substrate concentration if there was no inhibitor. The light blue line, we've added a competitive inhibitor and the green line, we've added a non-competitive inhibitor. And what we're doing is we're increasing the substrate concentration to see how it affects the rate of reaction. Now, if we just look at the example with no inhibitor, just to make sure our knowledge is solid, should make sense. As we are increasing the substrate concentration, obviously the rate of reaction increases. And that's simply because there's more substrate, so more enzyme substrate complexes will form and we'll get more product in a given time. Now you can see that the rate of reaction is plateauing here. So the rate of reaction remains constant and that's because the enzyme concentration is limiting. That's because all the active sites are occupied by substrate or all the enzymes active sites are saturated. And we've spoken before about it's almost like, you know, you're giving more substrate, you're giving more reactants, but there's only so many enzymes. They can only work so fast. It's like there's so many, uh, there's only so many, what did we say in lesson? There's only so many workers in the factory. There's only so many bakers in the bakery. So you can only make so many cakes, no matter how many ingredients you have. OK. Um, now let's look at the inhibitors. The competitive inhibitor, that is the light blue line, and it says if the inhibition is reduced at high substrate concentration, then the inhibitor is a competitive one. And we can see if we look at the line, the light blue line, as we increase the substrate concentration, you can see the rate of reaction is reduced, it's reduced, it's reduced, but at very high substrate concentrations, the rate of reaction is no longer reduced. So let's see if we can write some notes so this is super clear. So if we've got a competitive inhibitor involved in our reaction, at high substrate concentrations, the reaction can reach the same maximum rate as when there is no inhibitor. Or another way to say that is it can reach, we call it Vmax, it can reach the maximum rate. Now, why? Well, remember, this is at very high substrate concentrations. And remember, the competitive inhibitor is competing with the substrate. It's competing for the active site. So if you increase the substrate concentration, what is going to happen? The substrate is going to outcompete the inhibitor. And you'll get to a point where all active sites are occupied by substrate, not inhibitor. So the inhibitor has been outcompeted. You could even try and put some numbers to it to, to make it make sense. Just put some arbitrary numbers to it. Like if you've got 50 enzymes, yeah, and you've got a million substrates and only 20 inhibitors. At any one time, all of those enzymes active sites will be occupied by substrate because there's a million substrates compared to a much smaller number of inhibitors. 
So the substrate is going to outcompete the inhibitor and all active sites will be occupied by substrate. And when all active sites are occupied by substrate, you will reach Vmax. You will reach the same maximum rate as if that inhibitor was not even there. I hope that makes sense. So you increase the substrate concentration. If it's a competitive inhibitor, what you will see is at high substrate concentrations, the rate of reaction is no longer reduced because all enzymes active sites will be bound to a substrate. It's outcompeted the inhibitor. It's not the same for non-competitive though. Have a look at the green line on the graph. Non-competitive. Why do I struggle to spell competitive so much? Look at the green line. If it's a non-competitive inhibitor, the rate of reaction is reduced, 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 reduced. It's always lower. Even at very high substrate concentrations, the rate of reaction is always reduced. It's always lower than when there is no inhibitor. Let's write it down so we've got some notes. Even at very high substrate concentrations, the rate of reaction is still reduced. It will not reach Vmax. It will never reach the same maximum rate as if there were no inhibitor. And this is because the inhibitor is non-competitive, right? So the inhibitor is not competing for the active site. Remember, it binds to an allosteric site. So it is not in competition with the substrate. It's binding to an alternative site, an allosteric site on the enzyme. So no matter how much you increase the substrate concentration, some enzymes will always be inhibited. And again, we could put numbers to it, right? If you've got 50 enzymes with 50 available active sites, if you've got a million substrates and only 20 inhibitors, those 20 inhibitors are not competing with that million substrates. So those 20 inhibitors can still bind to 20 enzymes. They can still bind to 20 allosteric sites and can still inhibit 20 enzymes. So the rate of reaction will still be reduced even if you've got a million, two million, five million substrates. Some enzymes will always be inhibited because they're not in competition with the substrate. Okay. Let's have a look at a question linked to this then. It says the graph shows the effect of substrate concentration. So if you have a look, we are increasing the substrate concentration on the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. Now we've got a line on the graph already just showing the rate of the reaction. We can see the rate increases as we add more substrate because there's more substrate available, more enzyme substrate complexes will form, more product. Eventually it does level off or plateau and that's because the enzyme concentration is now the limiting factor or all enzyme active sites are occupied. But can we sketch a curve on the graph to show the rate of reaction in the presence of a competitive inhibitor? So what we need to do is align below the original line. So we're saying, well, you know, there is an inhibitor don't know if my line's the best actually there. It looks a bit wonky. There is an inhibitor, so the rate of reaction is reduced, but because it's a competitive inhibitor, there we go, I'm going to join, I'm going to join. Because it's a competitive inhibitor, at very high substrate concentrations, so for me, I've done it about here, at very high substrate concentrations, the rate of reaction will no longer be reduced. The rate of reaction can reach the same maximum rate as if there was no inhibitor. It can reach V max. Because at very high substrate concentrations, the substrate will outcompete the inhibitor and all active sites will end up being occupied by substrate. So to get these marks, the line should be below the blue line, but it should meet up with the blue line somewhere towards the end of the graph. It should meet up somewhere. Doesn't matter exactly where, but it should reach the same maximum rate by the end.
where the substrate concentration is high. Let's have a go at question two. Uh, methotrexate is a drug used in cancer treatment. You're told it is acting as a competitive inhibitor and it targets this particular enzyme called folate reductase. Don't worry too much. You know, you've never heard of this drug. You've never heard of this enzyme. It doesn't matter. You're told this drug is a competitive inhibitor and you do know how they work. So explain how this drug, the inhibitor, reduces the rate of reaction. So the drug, because it's a competitive inhibitor, it has a similar shape to the enzyme's substrate, whatever that may be, we don't know, but we know it's a competitive inhibitor. So we know it must have a similar shape to the substrate. So can bind to the enzyme's active site. Or you can say it must be complementary to the enzyme's active site. So it reduces the number of enzyme substrate complexes. Because remember, if it's a competitive inhibitor, it's going to bind to the active site. That's going to block the substrate from binding to the active site. So you're going to have fewer enzyme substrate complexes forming. And that's how it reduces the rate of the reaction. Competitive inhibitor, Remember not to mix up your non-competitive. Non-competitive would not be a similar shape to the substrate, would not be complementary to the active site, would not bind to the active site, but it would bind to an allosteric site, which would change the shape of the active site. So it would still reduce the number of enzyme substrate complexes and it would still reduce the rate of reaction. But read the question carefully. This one we were told was competitive. So make sure you are explaining how a competitive inhibitor works. I hope that has been useful and helped you to understand a little bit more about enzyme inhibitors and how to distinguish between them in an experiment where we increase substrate concentration. Thanks, guys.